On this episode of Canine Corner, Santa Paws is coming to town. We'll be sharing some ways to celebrate the season with your festive Fido. We'll be learning about essential oils for dogs, which might just make the perfect Christmas gift for your pup. Plus, we'll be learning some holiday safety tips for our canine companions. And we'll introduce you to this adorable little guy who's looking for a forever home. All this coming up right now on Canine Corner. Hi there, I'm Rhiannon Trutanich, your host for Canine Corner, the show that your dog will give two paws up. We have a great show for you today. It's the holiday season, and I don't know if you know, but Santa Paws is coming to town. So my co-host Popeye Trutanich and I will be sharing some ways to celebrate the season with your canine companion. And Jean Brasovich from Tranquil Pet will be here to talk to us about essential oils for your dog, which might be a great stocking stuffer this Christmas. We'll also be talking about holiday season safety for pups, but first, let's meet a few rescue dogs who you might recognize who are still looking for their forever homes. Rhiannon, I want you to meet one of our cutest little friends. His name is Bosom, and don't ask me what that means, but he responds to it. He's about seven years old. He is a Coton de Toulour, which is very fancy for saying hypoallergenic French dog, and poodle mix. And he is um, 12 pounds. He's full grown. He loves to be with a human or humans that will just completely shower attention on him and take him for walks and be an only child. I think he would probably thrive in an adults only home that would um, have a fenced in yard because he does like to go um, wandering around for the occasional lizard or squirrel in the backyard. But other than that, as you can see, he's preoccupied with everything that's going on right now and he just needs a good home. Hopefully, we'll be able to find him one. I would like to introduce Rocky. He is a Belgian Malinois mix. This is Vibica. This is Rocky's foster mom. We think he's about 10 years old or so. He's very affectionate, a big cuddler, loves attention. Small dogs sometimes scare him, so he would be best in a home without smaller dogs loves children, loves people, <laughs> loves hot dogs, loves to play, super smart, learns things quickly. He's worked with um, a trainer for a little bit, um, responds very well to training. He loves to go hiking. He can go for a three mile hike every day. Forte Rescue rescued him from the pound. He was very undernourished. He weighed about 60 pounds when he was saved. He's now about 85 pounds, so he put on a su substantial amount of weight. He looks much better now. He's feeling much better. His coat has filled out. It's very luxurious. He's really just looking for a home to go on hikes and to, to cuddle with. If you are interested in adopting either of these dogs, please give us a call at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov and we can put you in contact with the rescue group. Now, we have introduced you to a lot of dogs this year and many of them have been adopted, which makes me really happy. Let's reintroduce you to a few of them and meet their forever families.
to tune in next month so we can introduce you to a few more dogs who are still looking for their forever homes and of course share more adoption stories. Now essential oils can have amazing benefits for people and pets. Jean Brusovich from Tranquil Pet is here now to talk to us about how essential oils could help your dog. And with Christmas coming up, this might be a great gift idea. So Jean, I know about essential oils for people, but you're here to talk to us today about essential oils for pets. Right. What do we need to know before we learn about essential oils for pets? Well, the first thing that I wanted to cover was, and to make all your viewers aware of, is that this talk I'm gonna give, the discussion we're gonna have, is for educational purposes only. I am not a veterinarian. Um, and what I plan to discuss today is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prescri prescribe, excuse me, for any disease or condition. Tranquil Pet, my business, we do not diagnose or treat injuries, illness or disease, nor do we prescribe a medical treatment. Um, this is a type of holistic um, care and you should always temper this with talking to your own veterinar veterinarian, your own um, medical doctor if you want to apply it to yourself. What is the history behind essential oils? Um, essential oils were one of mankind's first medicines and we can see them in the hieroglyphics um, on, the, on the walls of the Egyptian temples depicting the blending of oils and the numerous medicinal formulas. Um, the Egyptians were actually masters at essential oils. Unfortunately, there is a lot of misinformation out there and about the use and safety of the essential oils. And much of this misinformation refers to the fragrance or the perfume grade oils. And, and these are the type of oils that are in that pyramid example that I gave you. Um, about 98% of essential oils produced in the world today are not intended for serious therapeutic and or medicinal purposes. They are mostly produced for perfumes, cosmetics, and um, the food industries. So for example, a pure therapeutic great essential oil is immediately absorbed into your skin. Now that we know a little bit about the background of essential oils, how can they help our pets? Well, to do the topic justice, it's going to take more time than we have right now. So basically, I mean, it could take hours to cover this topic. Um, and it also doesn't allow for viewers to ask questions, which is why we were presenting a more in-depth discussion on toxic free living uh, for your animals, including a more detailed discussion on this topic of animals and essential oils um, and how you can assist the, your animal's health, um, which oils to use, why, and how to use them. Um, we are gonna be holding this event on Sunday, uh, January 6th at the Torrance Airport uh, from 1.30 to 3.30. Um, I, I'm very excited to also let you know that Ani Hull, who you know, I just, she's done pictures for you. Ani Hull is a pet photographer and she is offering a free complimentary um, pet session, photographic pet session um, to each attendee. Plus I'm also going to be offering a complimentary, a couple of complimentary pet services as well as we're going to have a number of door prizes and refreshments. Um, there is a slight fee, it's only $10. I'm not keeping the money, it's going to be donated to Gone to the Dog Rescues, which you also know, Marcy. Yes. Um, space is limited, and so you could register online. Wonderful, and can you bring your animals to the event or is it oh, people only? Good point, no, it's people only. Okay. So you leave Fido at home, you learn about all these amazing things, and you get some pet stuff and right. you're helping rescue dogs right i mean i think too this is actually our holiday episode so i think your dog buying you a ticket to this is a great christmas present <laughs> oh that's i'm gonna pitch nice, it to popeye nice, nicely put <laughs> <laughs> what should we as pet parents absolutely know before treating our pets with essential oils their sense of smell can be between can be between a thousand to ten million times wow. greater than 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 a humans wow. we have about five million scent glands whereas dogs have uh, 125 million to 300 million scent glands and it also depends on the size of the animal 
it's easy to understand that a new smell, like for an example, like one of the theoretic grade, like maybe a lemon oil, um, may be uh, take take may take your animals some getting used to, um, which is why I cannot um, express the importance of going slow with your animals. How do you go about? introducing or, or showing your dog essential oils for the first time you as the pet parent need, need to be very cognizant and aware of your animals reactions to things you need to go very very slow okay. um, when introducing them uh, to, to a new something new um, you need to and, and then you need to take into consideration the following their size um, a um, Yorkie or a cat will have a different response to an oil um, versus a Rottweiler. Their hair, the density and the follicles change some absorb quicker than others. So, you know, the uptake of the oil going into their skin, you need to be careful of that. Again, their sense of smell. Now with the holiday season coming up, it's a very stressful time. You know, just not only for people with so much going on, but that kind of rolls over into our pets' lives as well. Just with us being busy and and needing to fit everyone's schedules together and everything that comes along with this time of year. But could essential oils help with that? What are some of the benefits that our pets can get from them? Um, if you have a hyper dog, there are oils that can, that are calming, okay. that are, you know, that are help with their stress levels. Um, if they get upset stomachs, there are certain ones that um, will help with the, with the upset stomachs, I've had some people say their dog gets car sick. Mm -hmm. They can use an oil to help them so the dog's not vomiting in the car. Um, but these are all, you know, over, over, over time as you test it on the dog, every animal again is different. Um, one of the things that I like about the line that I am, that I found that I am using is, because I spent about eight months researching a lot of different wow. essential oil companies. And this particular one, Ha actually has an animal line. Um, they have oils, uh, shampoo, they have treats um, specifically uh, designed, they have the scientific studies behind it that are made especially for animals. Wow. I would like to reiterate some of the um, just basic do's and don'ts and making sure that you are using a therapeutic grade essential oil. Um, dilute it heavily with a carrier oil or water and that's also something we'll go over at the event on uh, January 6th. Start small and in moderation. Um, observe how your animal responds, always watching how they respond to things um, and you care, the care for each animal is going to be different. The don'ts, don't use the oils near an animal's eyes, ears, mouth, nose or any other sensitive areas. Um, don't use hot oils. Um, an example of a hot oil would be a wintergreen or a peppermint oil. If you are interested in contacting Jean or finding out more information about Tranquil Pet, please visit TranquilPet.com. So as you know, the holidays can be so hectic and these essential oils could help reduce some of the stress for your canine companion. Now we're gonna take a short break, but don't go anywhere. There's much more doggone fun when we come back. Everywhere that we go, he makes people laugh and makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. And <laughs> I watch him cook, cause when I grow up, I wanna be a cook too. I mean, he has the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. Welcome back to Canine Corner. I'm your host, Rhiannon Tritanich. So the holidays are approaching, but don't worry because my co-host Popeye Tritanich and I have you covered. We're going to share some ideas so you and your very own Santa Paws can have the most festive season. Pour yourself an eggnog or an egg dog for your canine companion. Throw on your Christmas jammies because Santa Paws and I are going to share some great ways to celebrate the season. If you and your pup feel like staying home this holiday season, that doesn't mean you have to miss out on all the Christmas fun. There are so many ways to celebrate the season right from the comfort of your own home. 
Now, one of my favorite holiday traditions growing up was reading The Night Before Christmas on Christmas Eve. And every year, Popeye and I curl up in our holiday jammies and read that book. Now, another thing you can do during the holiday season is send out holiday cards. I love putting my holiday cards together. I love receiving holiday cards too. And it's just really sweet. Popeye and I take a photo every year for the card and you can have a professional photographer take them or you can even just have somebody take it for you at home in front of your Christmas tree. I think we look pretty good in these, Popeye. What do you think? Now, a couple other ideas with the holidays it's a lot of fun and very magical, but can also be super stressful. I mean, so much to do, so much going on. So it's important to take time to relax as well. I don't know about you, but spending time with this guy is the perfect way for me to get away from all the stress. So why not have your dog help you deck the halls? I'm not saying he's gonna put up the Christmas lights. Although Popeye, if you're interested, that job's open. <laughs> But just having him or her there while you're decorating is a really fun way to celebrate the season with your pup. Of course, you can also have your dog have a little influence on the Christmas tree decor like Popeye did. I use a couple of Popeye's toys on the tree as decoration. Of course, if you're doing that, you're gonna wanna make sure to not put any hazardous materials that your dog could get into or could choke on, anything like that. So if I was doing this tree at home, I would probably skip the candy canes. Although I think Popeye wants them on there. Now, uh-oh, uh-oh, you are my dog. You like presents. I love opening gifts on Christmas. There, it's, it's okay, it's okay. But another thing you can do is you can have your dog open his or her own gifts. Popeye has a couple holiday gifts in here. I guess it's okay for you to open it early, Popeye. If you're doing this, you're gonna wanna make sure to take off any dangling parts or anything that your dog could choke on before you let your dog open his or her own gift. All right, Popeye, get it. Get it, Popeye, get it. Popeye, get it, open your gift. I normally don't have to help him, he must be shy. Get it, Popeye. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to keep a close watch on your dog while he or she is opening the gifts, but make sure to have your camera rolling because it is guaranteed to be adorable, as you can see. Get it, Popeye. Oh! What else is in there? If you're looking to get out and about this season with your canine companion, don't worry, we can help. You can take your dog to go Christmas tree shopping. It's a lot of fun. Just make sure to call ahead and find out if the lot you're going to is dog friendly. Now, there is nothing cuter for a pet owner during the holiday season than taking their very own Santa Paws to take a photo with Santa Claus. Delamo Fashion Center is hosting two holiday pet nights where you can take your pup to get a photo with Santa. Popeye and I attended the first one and we had so much fun hanging out with Santa Claus. Right, Popeye? Popeye didn't want to leave. <laughs> if you missed it, don't worry because they're hosting a second one on Sunday, December 9th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's happening right outside the Macy's Women's Store in the mall. If your festive Fido is a social butterfly, then setting up a secret Santa Paws exchange with his friends this holiday season is a great idea. You can either host it at your home or you can all meet at a dog friendly restaurant for the big gift exchange. Now, one great way to spend your time this holiday season is by giving back. Popeye and I love making little gift bags for all the dogs at our local shelter. You can also bring down blankets, unopened dry food, unopened canned food, unopened treats and toys. You can also donate to local rescues as well. And it's just a really great way to spend your time during the holiday season. If you give any of these ideas a try, let us know. It will definitely put us in the Christmas spirit. You can tag us using hashtag a very canine Christmas on social media. Now, the number one key to a great holiday season with your canine companion is to make sure that he or she stays safe. So Jean Brasovich from Tranquil Pet is back now to share some holiday season pet safety tips. What are your holiday pet safety tips? So Jean, Santa Paws and I would like to know some holiday safety tips for your okay. canine companion. Um, 
I do have 12 holiday safe for the days of Christmas. I do have some 12 safety pet tips. The first one I want to talk about, I usually save for last, but I think it's important enough that I'm reversing the order. It is, number one is, please do not give a puppy or a kitten as a Christmas gift. It's a very personal issue. Um, there's a lot of thought and discussion that needs to go into it within the family as to what type of dog. Um, if you live in an apartment, obviously you don't want a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd or you know something big because they need the space to roam, run I should say. And you also have to take into consideration if there's children, what's a good dog for the family pet. So there's a lot of issues that are involved in picking a pet for the home. So you should either talk to the family first if you want to give it to the, you know, the children um, or talk to an expert. Okay. Um, I'm happy if somebody wants to call me and ask me, I'm happy to talk to them. They could talk to any number of dog trainers. Mm -hmm. They could also talk to pet rescues yeah. and they will help them in the decision as to what type of dog would best fit their family. What holiday decoration should I keep my pet away from? Pets are part of the family, but you have to be, please be careful when decorating your home. Tinsel on a tree can get, t uh, they could swallow that and it could get around their intestines. Um, pine needles, they can puncture their intestines if they swallow them. Um, the water, if this is of course, if you have a live tree, uh, the water can become stagnant over time. Some people add aspirins to them to help keep the life of the tree a little longer. That if the dogs or the cats drink that, that can be toxic to them. Um, lights, they can get electrocuted if they chew on those cords. Um, they can pull the tree over. Uh, snow globes, if they, if they knock one over and it breaks open, they usually have antifreeze in them and that's poisonous to an animal. What holiday plants are harmful to pets? Plants, holly, mistletoe, lilies, poinsettias are toxic to animals. So be careful about what you have around the house, especially if your cat nibbles on plants, you have to be careful of that. What items around the Christmas tree should my pet avoid? Ribbons around the trees, toys, you know, toy uh, ornaments on the tree. If they pull them off and start chewing on them, they can get lodged in their throat or their intestines. Um, make sure they have plenty of fresh water. Um, have that quiet space for them. The holidays, those, these last three months of the year are very stressful <laughs> on, on people and, and the pets. What holiday foods are toxic to pets? Foods that are toxic, the, the um, herbs, and spices that you put on your foods are toxic. Stuffing, the, the stuffing with the herbs is toxic. Raisins, grapes, onions, onion powder, uh, raw eggs, uh, dough, bread dough, cake batter, those are all toxic to pets. Again, the food wrappings, be careful about, you know, that your dogs can't get into the trash cans pull out if you're doing a turkey or something with bones that they don't get that bone lodged in their throat. Um, uh, chocolate, xylitol, that's a sweetener, an artificial sweetener that we're finding in a lot more foods. Mm -hmm. um, be careful of that. Um, alcohol, I don't know if I said that or not. Alcohol, if they're vomiting or they have diarrhea and you feel that they've eaten something that's poisonous or toxic, um, I have a list that they can post on their, you know, wall or refrigerator that says your first step should be to call your vet or your um, emergency vet clinic. You can't do them. You can also call the ASPCA um, hotline or the um, pet poison helpline and those are posted on there. They charge a fee, those two, but it's better than not having any kind of information. Please do not call 911. They would be very happy to help you if they could, I'm sure, but they are not trained toxicologists. If you are interested in contacting Jean or finding out more information about Tranquil Pet, please visit TranquilPet.com. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer. 
Call us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. Now, if you missed the rescue pups at the beginning of our show, or if you're anything like me and want to see the adorable dogs again, let's say hi one more time. Bosom is a seven-year-old Catone de Tuliar and Poodle mix. Bosom would be best in an adults-only home. He's a very sweet dog and can't wait to meet his forever family. Rocky is a Belgian Malinois mix. He's 10 years old. He was rescued from a shelter by Forte Animal Rescue. He's a sweet dog who loves to cuddle. He gets along with people and children. He's a little scared of small dogs, so he would do best in a home without them. He's a very active dog who loves hikes and long walks. He's extremely smart and responds very well to training. His favorite snack is hot dogs. He would love a forever family to call his own. If you want even more Canine Corner or just want to say hello or share an adorable photo of your very own Santa Paws with us, we always love to hear from you. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us. From everyone here at Canine Corner, we wish you and your canine companion a happy and healthy holiday season. I'm Rhiannon Chertanich, and we'll see you next time.